Now, I change the direction here. What would you do with a £115 million lottery win? I certainly wouldn't be here. Uh, well, one couple, they decided to donate more than half of their winnings to loved ones, charity and those in need. You can't quite believe it, can you? But there are some people out there. Uh, I am joined by, well, we should refer to her as a super donor, Frances Conley. Frances, lovely to see you. Very good morning. Good morning, Nadie. Thank you for having me. No, no, it, it, is, it is our pleasure. And I suppose before we get into what you have been doing with the money, I wonder if you would take us all the way back to the point that you won it. I mean, how did you discover that you were just about to become, well, one of the richest people I will ever speak to? Uh, I, I was sitting on a sofa watching the telly and knitting. And my husband said, I think I've got some good news for you. And he turned his laptop around and showed me a picture of a lottery ticket. And I said, oh, well, if you're saying it's good news, it must be more than £2.50. And he said, uh, yeah, a bit. I said, so, so what is it? And he said, no, we've won. I said, no, we, what have we won? I don't know. So he told me and I just, I think for the first time in my life, I was dumbfounded. I was shocked and I, I had nothing to say. So we stared at each other for about five minutes, stood up, gave each other a hug and I said, I'll go and put the kettle on, shall I? <laughs> you, you always need a nice cup of tea at moments like, you know, winning 115 million quid. Um, so let's move on from, from the initial shock. And of course, when, when you have that kind of, I mean, we're talking about a life-changing sum of money. It's not just your life that's been changed. It's so many other people's lives. And you've, you've gone on to kind of distribute, as I understand it, what? practically half of the amount of money that you've earned? Uh, I think we're just over 60 million now. So why? <laughs> and I'm not, I'm not suggesting that charity is not a, not a good thing, but you have to say the reason we are speaking to you is I don't know that we've seen a kind of a charitable, charitable donation on this kind of scale before from someone in your position, that you have been so lucky to win all this money and, and rather than you know, going out and buying you know, 100 Lamborghinis or whatever it is that, that, that lottery winners do, You've shared the wealth. Well, we've, we've spent quite a lot on ourselves as well. We've enjoyed our money. We've had a yes. great time. We've never we've we've never worked so hard either. Um, we, uh, my daughter, every time I complain that I'm I'm tired or I'm fed up or I'm, you know, she said, talk to the hand. You could be lying on a beach somewhere doing nothing. Doesn't want to hear. She so she makes a joke of it. Um, to be fair, I'm kind of surprised because I I just assumed everybody would do that. I. Patrick said to me, um, he always said if when we if we won the lottery, I, he would never let me uh, open a an email or a, answer a phone again because I'd just give it all away. It's just it's just in my nature, I think. And I, he turned around at night and he said to me, he said, right, that's too much money, or a lot of money. You can make your list now. And he, he he gave me a pen, a piece of paper, and told me to make my list, and I did, and I still have it. So, what, give us a few of the uh, give us a few of the ideas, the stories um, behind the money that you you have donated away. I mean, I I, I can only imagine that it, that it must be a really uplifting feeling knowing that you are in a position to be able to help so many people, and then actually carrying through with it. Well, uh, my sister was just about to lose her house, and that would save that. My nephew was able to buy my mother's house that we all grew up in, and he lives in that now, which was lovely. That's that's family stories. Friends, I mean, we had one friend. We we took them out for dinner, and it was uh, had a, a little private dining room. And he got up and he he ran round the table, whooping and throwing his uh, napkin round his head. Uh, we had another friend who just put his head in his hands and cried when we told him. Um, the family and friends thing was amazing. I mean, I've, I've been in tears so many times. Uh, the the other gifts and bits and pieces, I, I set up the Kathleen Graham Trust in Northern Ireland after my mother, and I set up the PFC Trust in Hartlepool, which is Patrick and Francis Conley. And that was to help me, um, because I am a bit, just give everybody and try to solve everything. And I really just, can't do that. Yeah, so Francis, I wanted... Just, we're just on that point, because we're just about to run out of time. I, I, I read that perhaps uh, Patrick, your husband, was just perhaps suggesting that you maybe want to limit kind of some of the, the, the donations that you're making. Are you guys, are you guys perfectly happy? Because, you know, I'm here if you're looking for a replacement. 
<laughs> no, I'm sorry. My husband has made my life. I had the life of a princess the entire time I've been with him. And I I absolutely adore him. I've been away for a few days with my two friends who are hiding behind the sofa over there, Karen <laughs> Redmond. Karen Redmond, Dyke and Caroline Rose. Um, and they, uh, I, I actually, I, we were away three or four days and I miss him like Billy O already. I, I can't wait to be back with him. Um, no, yeah, it, it kind of was a joke that got out of hand. I, um, I've obviously given away a lot and I really do have to slow down. No, Patrick and I are very sensible. Still, we actually have a budget for everything. We sit at the beginning of the year and go through our electric bills and our gas bills and all that and make sure that we're, you know, we're not wasting any money. Um, I, I need to save money so I can give it more away. And uh, we agreed a budget. Uh, we agreed a smaller budget uh, than I had been so far. And then I, I said to one of the journalists, I said, well, yeah, I'm sticking to the budget. I'm just on uh, 2032 at the minute. <laughs> um, well, look, Francis, if things change with Patrick, you've got my number now, but I think fair no, play to you. This it's, is... Patrick, it's Patrick's money as well. I mean, he, it comes out of our joint bank account. He knows every penny I spend. And if he didn't want me to, it wouldn't be done. I was going to tell you, I don't... Oh, that's fun. Look, Francis, give our best to Patrick as well, but well done you. This is a fantastic story. It's nice to actually have some good news nice to report to for you, once. Nice to meet you, You take care.